Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. John Belkowitz here from Intelligent Concrete. We are spending this week, or we're doing a series. I really don't know dates very much. <laughs> we're doing a series on 3D printing of cementitious composites, often referred to as 3D printing of concrete structures. Now, the reason why I say 3D printing of cementitious composites or structures is because the reality is um, we're not using concrete in most of these prints. But that's a topic for another discussion. Ooh. But today we're going to be talking about uh, what are the properties uh, needed for a cementitious mix. For th oh, I guess we are talking about today. <laughs> for 3D printing of structures. And it's really, really basic, but it can be difficult to create the consistent mix. And I think that's where, you know, the industry is really grasping right now, you know, coming up with the software, the hardware to push that fluid material out into a certain shape and, you know, go into an XYZ plane. That's not the hardest thing to do, but to get a consistent mix um, that meets all the demands uh, that we're about to list out can be very tiresome and confusing um, because you're, you're juggling a lot of balls. So um, I'm not going to give you the mix design. This is probably one of the one times that I don't go into the actual mix design itself. What I wanted to focus on is the holistic, um, you know, what are things to keep in mind uh, when, uh, you know, going after this concrete or cementitious composite or as I'm trying to call it in the um, ACI committee, a cementitious ink. And if you think it's a, a printer and a printer uses inks, ink to create two-dimensional images, here we're using a cementitious ink to create a three-dimensional image. Let me know if you like that or you hate that. I, I'm kind of in love with it. Okay, so um, what were the properties needed for this cementitious ink to do 3D printing? First of all, it has to be a fluid mix. And when I say fluid mix, it has to be a mix that can go through the entire pumping system uh, while possibly losing some of its fresh properties, having enough to get through that, you know, that nozzle, that extruder, uh, into a shape without tearing and without losing its shape. So it's a balance between having a high enough viscosity, and for those of you who don't know the definition of viscosity, uh, the, the word is defined as um, resistance to lateral shear. So peanut butter has a higher viscosity uh, than water. And part of that viscosity is losing some of that, that fluidness or that slump or that spread as it goes through the system. And you know that's all dependent on the type of system that's pumping it, the length of the hose, the type of the hose, the heat of the day, so on and so forth. Uh, but you want to get it out of that extruder into a given shape that will hold its shape and still have some um, adhesive property, still be creamy and dreamy enough that we're going to have successive adhesion between successive layers. So again, that's two really tough things to balance right there. And if it was just those two things with the mix, we'd have a hard enough time. So those two things, again, just to review is Having that ability to flow through the pipe, now whether that's the you know the amount of paste, the the, the content of air, the grant, the aggregate maximum aggregate size, it I mean depends on the type of pumping system that you have, you know what type of maximum aggregate that it can take, um, and, and then of course you know it's also the you know maintaining that that viscosity to hold its shape and that stickiness. Um, that goes along with that viscosity to hold its shape and then the success of adhesion. So the third thing that we really need to focus on when you're creating a mix uh, for this you know, 3D printing is the time factor for setting. And, and what I mean by that is with printing, we want to get successive layers on top of each you know, lift or, or get the lifts moving up as quickly as possible. Um, we want to focus on you know, building those lifts, but, but our, our uh, you know, the thing that we have to be cognizant of is that if the previous lift 
is not strong enough to hold successive lifts, it's going to end up collapsing on itself. So what we have to maintain is this strength development over time, almost like a, you know, going from your initial set to your final set. But, you know, we have to take into account the ambient environment of the day or when it's being printed. Uh, and then uh, what type of structure, because not all structures are going to have, you know, the same type of pauses, the same type of lags to get you that development of strength when you need it. Um, so again, that timing factor is going to be based off of a lot of things, not only to include the chemistry of the local materials that you're going to be using in your mix, um, but also going to be the type of structure that you're building and how fast you're building those successive layers on top of each other. Um, and, and when it comes down to it, I think the thing that, that most folks, and this is, this is not looking at, 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 the, at the structure itself, this is um, looking at the properties for printing the structure. So the, the last piece of this is, and I, I think it's something that's, it's, it's very easy to, to understand that the, 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 the probability, the possibility of this happening, but being able to mechanically uh, take care of it is, is fairly difficult. And that's the, the volume change that you either get from plastic or drying shrinkage, short term or long term shrinkage. And again, when it comes to it, you know, this is almost like um, you can compare it to brickwork or using concrete mace or, or you know, CMUs. Um, you know, there's so much restraint going on in between these different lifts and then the, the restraint that's being caused by, you know, the, the rigid connection that develops over time and then the volume change, you know, creates these residual stresses that can lead to you know, as I said, if it's a very hot uh, environment, if there's a lot of uh, solar radiation, um, you can get some plastic shrinkage cracking from evaporation, that rapid volume change. But also over time, too, you can start getting cracks that migrate through successive layers. So that, that's the final property of the mix that we should really be cognizant of. And there's a lot more properties that we can dive into. Even just talking about this, you can break it down further. But when it comes to making you know, a, a concrete for 3D printing, you have to take all these things into account and that last piece, that, that resiliency to volume change and then the restraint that's built up or the, from the restraint, you know, you have these residual forces and then the cracking to release that energy. I mean, that's something that, it not only plays into the aesthetics of the this structure, but also into the, the you know, compromising the structural integrity of it. So definitely need to be cognizant of all those things. And again, the object of this, this the first part of our series was not to go into the mix design. This is the one time I won't be doing that, but really going into the properties that we need to be con uh, cognizant of and need to be consistent when we print these three-dimensional uh, structures. So. Let us know if you have any questions. We're going to be diving deep into it this week, and we're pretty excited. Uh, as you can see, we've got some great props, too, to use in our discussion. So uh, excited to talk to you all about this. Have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Go Concrete! Bad Asphalt! <laughs>